The Swiss economy, dividends of war, quality exports, or political and economic stability. With a GDP per capita of over $80,000, the Swiss economy is one of the best economies in the world. Despite being a landlocked country with little natural resources, varying soil quality levels, and mountainous terrains, Switzerland has continued to surprise the rest of the world with its stable economy, low unemployment rate, low tax rates, and high quality products and services. Being a landlocked country alone puts Switzerland at a great disadvantage. The European country, just like all other landlocked countries and territories, does not have the trade advantages that coastal areas have. In addition, it has no oil, gold deposits, or rich diamonds mines to fall back on. The country has small deposits of iron and manganese and considerably large deposits of some other natural resources, including salts, sand, lime, and gravel. Compared to countries sitting on large deposits of natural resources worth tens of trillions of dollars, you could say Switzerland is at a great disadvantage. But do all these disadvantages stop the Swiss? Of course not. If you have ever priced a Swiss wristwatch or one of their overpriced chocolate bars, you would know that the Swiss might have a few disadvantages, but they have enough wealth to throw in all of our faces. In comparison, many other countries have all these advantages and are still doing poorly. Should we even talk about Swiss banks? These highly secretive financial institutions open their doors to all criminals, money launderers, drug lords, corrupt government officials, and just about anyone that has enough money and needs to stay under the radar. The Swiss Bankers Association estimated that Swiss banks held about 6.5 trillion US dollars in assets about three years ago. The percentage of these assets that used to belong to their high-profile clients we will never know. So, how have Switzerland gathered its immense wealth, and how does it continue to protect its economic stability during an era when many other countries seem to be making only the wrong moves? In this video, we examine the areas where the Swiss excel and how these areas contribute to their economy. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the workings of a shrewd, close-knitted, yet highly diversified and hardworking country that controls a considerable portion of the world's wealth. Please ensure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and drop your comments in the comment section below. Everything helps us grow so we can continue bringing you top-notch. Our story begins with the First World War. Before the beginning of the First World War, the Swiss economy was already strong. In fact, the country had what was considered the most GDP per capita in the world. When the war broke out in 1914, the Swiss economy only took a small hit because of the country's decision to remain neutral. While the rest of Europe was forming alliances, Switzerland was only interested in guarding its borders against being invaded by neighboring countries such as France and ensuring the continued survival of its economy. Was Switzerland able to achieve its aims? Yes, it was. Not only was Switzerland able to remain neutral during the war, but it also maintained trading relationships with both sides. When the Central Powers came to the shrewd Swiss to trade, the Swiss said, Yes, of course. We are not concerned about your war. We only want to remain rich and alive. When the Allies came for the same thing, the Swiss welcomed them with the same exuberance and shrewdness. In fact, in 1915, the Swiss created two different bodies to trade with the two sides. The Schweizer ist true Henstel für Überreich und Deswernverkehrs, SDS, regulated trade with the Central Powers and the Societe Suisse de Surveillance Economique, SSS, regulated trade with the Allies. The Swiss took a few hits, but not as much as the other European countries. Some parts of the Swiss economy even grew exponentially during the war. The Swiss continued to export textiles, machinery, and jewelry to their war-torn neighbors. They also benefited from imports from these countries. But they had to deal with an 11% drop in the GDP per capita and some inflation. Their lot during the war was far lesser than their neighbors. No matter how shrewd in calculating the First World War Swiss seemed, the Second World War Swiss made their actions seem like child play. During World War II, Switzerland was also able to stay neutral. The Swiss Banking Act of 1934 had been signed by this time. The act made it a crime for Swiss banks to divulge client information to third parties without permission from said client. During this time, many countries were still reeling from the political and economic instability created by the First World War. The rich needed a trustworthy haven for their money, and who was there to relieve the burden? The Swiss, of course. The Swiss Banking Act began a banking revolution that is still secretly revered and openly denounced in other parts of the world. In fact, we cannot count the number of Hollywood movies glorifying the sacredness of Swiss banks. Everyone who has seen a movie about money laundering knows that if you have the money, Swiss banks will welcome you with open hands, no questions asked. So during the six-year-long war, Switzerland had a somewhat healthy trading relationship with the two sides of the war, especially the Nazis. Until 1936, the Swiss franc was the only currency that remained freely convertible globally. Therefore, both the Allies and Axis powers sold large amounts of gold to the Swiss National Bank and relied heavily on its economic stability. 
The Nazis also had to rely completely on the Swiss franc since their own currency was no longer an acceptable means of payment in the international community. They relied on Swiss banks to purchase machinery and commodities during the war. This trade with both sides allowed Switzerland to make the most of the war. The secrecy of Swiss banks also made them the go-to choice for rich people looking to keep their treasures while the rest of the world was on fire. Did Swiss banks benefit from this secrecy and popularity? Of course they did. Many people and organizations have tried to pry into the immense wealth that Swiss banks made from unclaimed deposits after the war. The bulk of the gold they got from the Nazis also remains unclaimed till today. Some sources estimate that about 100 tons of Nazi gold were placed in Swiss banks during the war, and only about 4 tons made it back to Germany. Talk about reaping the benefits of war. Switzerland played a smart game during the wars and is probably still reaping the benefits till today. But are these war dividends the only reason for Switzerland's wealth today? We will let you decide that yourself after listening to other factors that could have contributed to the country's wealth. The trademark of Swiss quality. Switzerland's main exports are machinery and equipment, watches, pharmaceuticals, textiles, and apparel. These products are not limited to Switzerland only, but Swiss brands are known for their quality. The number of zeros in the price of your Swatch and Omega watches should convince you if we cannot. The Swiss name has always been equated with quality from dark, melting chocolates to quality, luxury watches, and trusted chemical and pharmaceutical products. The European country exports goods to Germany, the United States, India, France, Italy, and other countries in the European Union and the rest of the world. When countries think of Swiss products, they think of quality. Apart from goods, Switzerland is also known for great services, especially its notorious banking industry. The industry and service sectors are some of the best in the world, with high-profile workers and some of the most notable names in the industrial sector. Switzerland is home to companies such as Nestle, Glancore, Navarides, Credit Suisse, ABB Group, and many other Fortune 500 companies. The Swiss will provide almost any service to you as long as you have the money. During the Second World War, Switzerland charged its Jew community taxes for every Jew refugee that was allowed in from Nazi Germany. Today, you can still get different unorthodox services in Switzerland, including assisted suicide services for people of sound mind who wish to end their lives. The Swiss industrial sector boasts of one of the most hardworking labor forces in the world. They are also well rewarded. According to Salary Explorer, Switzerland workers earn an average of 124,000 Swiss francs over $134,000 every year. Some workers earn as high as over 553,000 Swiss franc or almost $599,000 per year. With such high wages, it is easy to give one's best to the country. These laborers are not just your run-of-the-mill workers. The Swiss government invests greatly in the country's educational system. Switzerland spends about 3% of its immense GDP on research and development to produce the very best minds year in, year out. In 2021, Switzerland produced 26 Nobel Prize winners. For a country with just over 8 million population, this is no small feat. Banking secrecy and neutrality in almost everything that plagues the rest of the world is not the only thing Switzerland is known for. The country is also known for its high educational standard. Unlike the rest of the world, Switzerland recognizes the importance of skills. Students in the upper secondary are trained in useful vocational skills that contribute immensely to the nation's growth. In turn, the workers know the benefit of hard work. Though a diversified people with German, Italian, French, and Romance speakers, if there is one thing these groups have in common, it is the importance of hard work, national interest, and a great savings culture. This concludes our second point and leads us to the third point, economic and political stability in Switzerland. Another factor that greatly contributes to the immense wealth of Switzerland is the country's economic and political stability. The government imposes reasonable tax rates on the citizens compared to other European countries. They also pay considerably low-value-added taxes, According to Trading Economics, the corporate tax rate in Switzerland is 14.98%. The citizens also enjoy a low social security tax rate of 12.80%, shared between employers and employees. The rich Swiss banks also give out loans to citizens. With so much unclaimed wealth, Swiss banks can certainly afford the loans. Switzerland has many small and medium enterprises that enjoy these loans. These businesses also enjoy highly considerate government policies. This is especially true for the agricultural sector which is highly subsidized by the Swiss government. The government also encourages the growth of its domestic market on political stability. Switzerland has a one-of-a-kind political system. It is the only country in the world that practices direct democracy. The people of Switzerland pretty much have political power. One person can overturn laws and even change the constitution by getting enough votes from other citizens. Even if the government wants to amend the laws, it can only do so if the people agree through a referendum. 
Swiss people take referendums on everything. In 2019, they took the world by storm by turning down a law that could have given them the highest minimum wage in the world. Imagine if this could happen in other countries in the world. Swiss people are certainly a strange breed, strong and hardworking, but pleasantly strange. If there is to be a change in the constitution, Swiss laws demand a mandatory referendum. In addition, the citizens are allowed to present a constitutional popular initiative to introduce amendments in the country's constitution. The people's direct involvement in governance has a lot of benefits. In August 2021, the unemployment rate in the country was only about 2.7%. It might even dip further in 2022, according to current projections. Switzerland is also projected as one of the most livable countries in the world. According to the Social Progress Report, Switzerland's medical, nutritional, and educational welfare is one of the best in the world. In 2015, the report gave the country a pass mark of 88.87 out of 100. According to the Global Livability Ranking of 2021, Zurich and Geneva rank 7th and 8th in the Global Ranking of Cities with Urban Quality of Life. Switzerland is also the 7th most peaceful country in the world according to the Global Peace Index of 2021. Even though the citizens keep their guns after their compulsory military service, there is still a low crime rate in the country. The Swiss economy is a strong and stable one. Many factors contribute to this from their filthily rich banks, which contribute immensely to the economy, their quality brands and services, and the political and economic stability that the country enjoys. What do you think contributes the most to the Swiss economy? What financial lessons do you think governments, organizations, and individuals can learn from the shrewd Swiss? Please drop your answers in the comment section below. Also, remember to give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications. Thanks for watching.